Well, it is sort of the question of the hour, isn't it? The how does technology help us and, and how does technology hamper us? First of all, what humans care about most about each other when we communicate is each other's intent. So we have specific words that we use and those words matter, but the wrapping around those words is our intent. And when, when we uh, say something like, great job, Glenn, if I say that in a way that sounds sarcastic, you have one reaction. If I say it in a way that sounds sincere, you have another reaction. So very simply, intent matters because it affects the way we receive the words mm. that are spoken. But in the virtual world, that comes through much less clearly. But there is an upside uh, that we've begun to see uh, during the pandemic, which is that when you get uh, people on a, a set of computer nodes, in essence, and gather them together through video conferencing, there's a democratization effect that happens. We all look the same uh, to each other on on uh, video. Uh, it's no longer the case that you've got uh, a very uh, a tall person standing on a stage with uh, lights on them and, and uh, a glorious introduction such as you gave me. Thank you, uh, Glenn, and, and music to usher the person on stage. There are all kinds of trappings that come with that elevation for a speaker in the sort of traditional setting and, and to a certain extent, the professor, too, um, in the in the university setting. So uh, I think there's some very promising uh, elements and the, and the way we begin to um, to bridge the divide is to use the best parts of the technology to increase the the, the everybody's voice in this uh, in this setting and to allow everyone uh, to speak in ways that they may have felt intimidated speaking before. So COVID is absolutely changing the shape of student demand, and those changes are really going to be permanent. Um, we're seeing that this is a huge opportunity for pivotal change in higher education. And what we're really finding is an accelerated adoption of online learning, particularly amongst the younger demographic. So we're finding that 85% of adults 18 to 24 now prefer to learn online, even if they're living on campus. Hmm. And this is largely because it affords them the opportunity to have location flexibility and greater feasibility to work while they're going to school. And I think further than that, we're really finding that that affordability play piece plays a larger role. So 40% of students are saying that they would uh, enroll in an online course because it is in fact more cost efficient. So I think as institutions think about how they can accelerate access to these underrepresented students, it's important for them to better understand the complexities of structural barriers in our country and how they can really break those down to give access to education for everyone. And this may mean rethinking the formats as online is just a complement to the in-person experience, but really core to the offering. So once a school's capacity is ramped up and students are engaged on a broader scale, maintaining that unique value proposition as other institutions figure out the recipe for growth and scale will be key. Universities and colleges not only prepare students for a job and give them the, the skills that they need to have an entry-level job in whatever industry they, they are interested. It's more than that. It, it's about enlarging their mental horizons. It's about learning how to learn. It's about engaging in, in, in critical thinking and how they see the world beyond just uh, a narrow definition of a job. And, and, and there are some things that can be assisted by, by technology. Teaching concepts is very easy to do uh, electronically. Uh, but learning other skills, learning attitudes, learning habits of mind, that's a very different story. That's a process that is longer, that requires more interaction with other human beings. And that's one of the biggest challenges we have now. That learning how to learn is something that is very difficult to do virtually. Because it's not so much that uh, online learning uh, works or doesn't work. 
Uh, it is that it works differently for different groups of students and different groups of faculty uh, for, for all that matters. Uh, not everybody teaches the same way, not everybody learns the same way. And, and I think that's, uh, that's the big, one of the biggest challenges we have with the increased diversification of our student body.